Hello and welcome to another Peancast Bowl of Linux Soup. Today's episode will be on Lubuntu 12.04 Precise Penguin. This is Ubuntu's uh, next LTS, but it is not Lubuntu's next LTS. So this release of Lubuntu is not an LTS release. Uh, it, it, it uses the LXDE environment instead of uh, Unity. And by default, it uses OpenBox as the window manager. Uh, it is designed to be a lightweight Linux distribution that you could throw on old or low-powered hardware and get some uh, good performance out of it. So uh, it has uh, applications such as Chromium, Open OpenBox as the window manager, and Pigeon. Uh, it's not the current LTS. Use PC Man FM as the light or as a lightweight file manager. LightDM is now the uh, a login manager. It is they now use that as the login manager. And Chromium is the open source version of Google Chrome is their web browser. And uh, of course, it's based on Ubuntu 12.04. Now, if we look in the uh, release notes. Uh, Some notable changes since the last release of Ubuntu, they've changed uh, the the group that's allowed to use sudo. It's been changed from admin to sudo uh, to uh, reflect upstream changes with, uh, well, in upstream implementation of Debian. So for this release, uh, admin group will continue to provide you uh, the sudo access in this release. But from now on, they're going to be uh, doing that through the sudo group. Uh, they have disabled Hibernate by default for all of you laptop users. What this will mean is Hibernate was, uh, if you choose that, it'll shut down the computer, but it'll save uh, uh, how your computer is working at that current time. Then when you start up your computer and boot back into the system, it'll load that uh, load it right back to the state it was. Suspend will just keep it in a, it'll, it'll be running, but in a low-powered state. So that's the difference between the two. That gets kind of confusing, because you pretty much have two uh, suspend features, and hibernate, according to the release notes, is found to be unreliable, slow, and confusing. So they've disabled it by default, but following this link, you can re-enable it. Uh, resolve Conf is now used to manage uh, slash etc slash resolve dot conf that deals with networking. Uh, Backports is now easily more accessible, and they've cleaned up their DVD images. Uh, that's the uh, a lot of the uh, big changes on the release notes. Uh, I'll have a link for this if you're interested. Uh, this is the list of applications. Uh, this is on Resolve Conf. This is the bug for Hibernate, the bug report, and I'll be showing that in a minute. So I will leave links to all these in the show notes for all of you interested in. Now, the OS. I'll show you the login manager first off, so we'll log out, because it now uses LightDM as the login manager using a GTK greeter, I think. So here, this is what it looks like from here. They've done a pretty good job making it look nice because it's uh, supposed to be a lightweight distro. Click on name, then type in the password. I am running this on 128 megabytes of RAM and 1.2 gigahertz of processing power. Uh, 1.216 to be exact. Uh, I tried 800 megahertz and it was it ran, but it was really sluggish. But it ran on 800 megahertz. It could at least run. Uh, what I will do for you guys is I will add I will add a CPU monitor so that you guys can track. For those of you interested in, so that you can track how this is running, because I ran this on low resources. They claimed it could run on 128 meg of RAM, and yeah, it does. 
and I purposely gave the Loman a CPU power to uh, reflect low settings. So where is the CPU? Oh, you need to go to add first. And then CPU usage monitor add. So you can look down here and see how the CPU is doing. Again, 1.2 gigahertz of, core of uh, processing power. Now, we have a very nice desktop. Uh, if you're interested in what the last one looked like, they uh, most of the releases have been blue. This had more of a grayish look to it. And I, I personally think this looks kind of... Uh, this looks neat, but I think this probably is the best looking release so far. It's looking really good which is awesome considering how lightweight the distro is supposed to be. Now, we're using Chromium because that's a lighter weight web browser. I've heard Maduri is lighter weight, but uh, it doesn't, it hasn't for me, it hasn't worked with everything for me. So, we have Chromium. Oops. As you can see, it's already using up the CPU. So, uh, internet works. Oh, considering the CPU usage, I'm afraid to see if Flash works. I uh, I installed, I updated the system, installed guest editions, and installed uh, the Ubuntu restricted extras. See if Flash works. Might kill all the CPU though. And it works. But it's killing the CPU. All right, so PC Man FM is the uh, file manager. It's a lightweight file file manager. Well, that's neat. We can uh, look at our applications through the uh, PC Man FM. We can look at applications, disk utility. That's included. We have XPad. Uh, that's pretty cool. Oh. One other thing, this reminds me, uh, I think I read in the release notes too, if you like any of the previous looks of Ubuntu, you are also able to install them from the repositories. So you should be able to install uh, previous themes and whatnot. So let's look at the application. So we have accessories, we have Archive Manager. Uh, I think that might be X Archiver. And we have a character map. The disk utility, very nice tool. You can see all of our uh, devices, and we have all this, all these different ways to manipulate them. We already looked at the file manager here. We have G calculator, lightweight uh, calculator. Image viewer. Yeah, this looks like the Neuer or something like it. Leaf pad. This is a, a notepad uh, look like or a clone. Very nice uh, editor there. Very lightweight. LX terminal. This is their terminal emulator by default if you uh, you need to type in some bash commands. An XPad notepad program for uh, sticky notes, kind of like that KDE widget for all of you KDE fans out there. Uh, this this would be one way to get some uh, stickies on the desktop. And under games, we have a bunch of Penguin card games. I'm not going to look through all these, but they're all uh, they're all card games, I think, just about. Uh, let's look.
public Minesweeper. Okay, so they're not all card games, but they're lightweight variants of common games. That's good. So under graphics, we have document viewer. Let's see. Uh, I'm not sure. That looks like EPDF view to me. Uh, empty paint. I've never used this personally, but I hear it's a uh, real pain to use, but it's lightweight. And simple scan for scanning. So under internet, we've looked at Chrome, we have Pigeon. Uh, I love Pigeon, and I use that for instant messaging. Well, I like just as much as the uh, text variant, text user interface variant, called uh, Finch. But they didn't compile, or it's not packaged with uh, Finch support. So uh, you can install Finch, but uh, it's not here by default. It's a text-based uh, variant. Uh, which is lightweight. I like it. You can enable mouse support with it too, uh, experimental mouse support. You can get sounds going with it to notify you, so it's almost like it's graphical, but it's in the command line lightweight, which is awesome. And we have Silfeed, which is an email client. Uh, I haven't used this one too much. In fact, I haven't used it at all. Uh, your transmission BitTorrent client for all of your torrenting needs. Good for distro hoppers. Uh, there we are. Under Office, we have Abby Word for our word processing needs. Uh, I had trouble opening a dot. Docx earlier with the Abbey Word. I installed LibreOffice. Just a little heads up uh, for any of you, uh, for anyone who would uh, need to open uh, stuff of that format. Uh, I think we already looked at the document viewer. GNU Merrick for our spreadsheet needs. No PowerPoint equivalent though, but you could very easily install LibreOffice from the repositories. We have Osmo, which is a calendar application. Under Sandvu, we have Audacious. I like this. A good, lightweight, simple video player. Very nice. We have the GNOME M player for watching videos. Gooby C view for the webcam, but it's not connected. And we have XF burn, which is the XFC uh, disk burner, but there are no burners available. This is a virtual machine. That's it under Sound Video and System Tools. We have uh, the GW Package Installer, so if you download a dev and double click on it, this thing pops up and graphically installs it. Uh, we have iBus. like it's not going to load. We have the Lubuntu Software Center. See, we can get more, look at our installed software. And I have no idea what Apps Basket is.
Oh, I guess it's sort of like a uh, place to throw all the stuff that you're interested in, and you could look at it. It's sort of like a shopping cart, but with uh, the apps in the software center. You can look and see what's installed, and we can get more installed categorized. That's that's pretty awesome. And then we have the all. Oh, I I like this layout. Actually, that's pretty neat. So let's see here. Maybe we want under. I guess it'd be under. I don't see an accessories section. Um, hmm. Just look at all. Let's say we want to install Terminator. It helped to spell it right. Then we add it, we can get information on it. It's even got a screenshot. Then we can look at reviews. Got good reviews. And if we like it, we can add it to the apps basket. We can go to the apps basket. Then we can either discard or install packages. And there's everything that's going to be installed right in front of us. That's just awesome. Huh. It's really hammering the CPU. There we go. That took a little while. Oh, preferences, I guess. might be crashing. I'm going to give this a bit more juice. Alright, gave it a uh, 1.92 gigahertz. Hopefully I should perform better. So, expert mode. No, it's just not applying anything. If we open the software properties, yep, that's the software sources. All right, so that doesn't work completely, but I do like the approach they're taking with this. Very nice. All right, so. Uh, under that, we have printing. We can add printers. And here's the good old Synaptic Package Manager. Task Manager. Oh, I skipped over. Yeah. Well, here's our Task Manager. We can show CPU usage, memory usage, and all the stuff that's running. Uh, system Profiler and Benchmark. Here's 
Terminator. I installed that. It does not come with the distro by default. Uh, it's uh, one of my favorite window managers, or I mean, pardon me, terminate or terminal emulators. Uh, it's a tiling terminal emulator, and you can also open tabs. And I forget the vertical key binding. Uh, time and date. Uh, looks like it might be for the system. Definitely hammering the CPU. Okay, there we go. It's all set. Uh, here we have the update manager for updating the system. Try closing that out. Here we have users and groups. We can change the settings of users on the system. And under preferences, we can install additional drivers. Uh, if you've seen uh, total, total OS today on Zucru 18, you know if you're an ATI user, not to click this. Uh, Bluetooth manager, you can customize look and feel. That I think is LX appearance. Yes, LX appearance. Uh, you have these different themes that are stock standards with LX. Even we have the Ubuntu theme and a Lubuntu icon thing and some other things as well. Yeah, you man do if you want the uh, Ubuntu icons. And we have different cursors. Yeah. And while we're at it, might as well see if they have any wallpapers other than this one. Oh wow, they actually included two. Uh, normally they include just one wallpaper. Huh. That's pretty cool. Happy New Year, a bit late for that, but um... Yeah. Here we have the desk Disk utility again, desktop session settings. Okay, oh, cool. Uh, here we can change our uh, window manager, but now we can we can untick and tick stuff here. Uh, it doesn't look like we can add anything. I think he uses the auto start file in open box, but uh, I'm not quite sure. And we can configure our keyboard and mouse. Good for touchpad. I wonder if they have SIM client. Uh, of course, it's not going to work because this is in the laptop. But it looks like they have SIM client installed. Uh, which is command line uh, configure your mouse and touchpad. I've had to use that before on uh, some uh, distributions to uh, get the uh, tap on the uh, touchpad working where you tap the pad and it clicks. I've had to activate that through SimClient before. Uh, here we can change uh, 
well, we have language support. Uh, not sure. Yeah, it looks like this is where you configure the language. Uh, here we can change the monitor settings, network connections. This is obconf. Uh, you go here to change your open box settings. So we can change the themes. Uh, we can add, uh, we can control the icons. Uh, so you could put it on uh, everything on the right side. So here we can have margins. Uh, what I've done in the past when running open boxes as a standalone manager is give myself uh, some margins, like uh, maybe a 20 or a 60, uh, too much, 30 pixel margin. Something like that, and then I'll put my conky on top and have like a horizontal conky. That way I can always see it. I've done that in the past. If you see some of my older videos around December and January and you saw my open box set up, then you'll see that I have a conky at the top. And we have the power manager for... Uh, changing the power settings for uh, laptop users. We have our preferred applications. So if we had Firefox installed, then we could switch to Firefox. Yeah, now Firefox is the default. Uh, we can look at the screensaver. That's X screensaver. And of course the run box. And the logout command, which I can use to shut down this virtual machine. That was a look at Lubuntu 12.04 Precise Pangolin, which is not the LTS release for Lubuntu. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Pingcast. I hope you stay tuned for another one.